You're listening to episode number 11 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, it's all about freezer cooking. It saves time. It saves money. It can quickly expand your family's palate and your cooking skills. Freezer cooking is nutritious and it's fun. And joining me on today's show is the author of the gorgeous new cookbook, From Freezer to Table, 75 Simple Whole Foods Recipes for Gathering, Cooking, and Sharing. My guest is Rachel T. Meyer. She is a mom, a savvy home cook. She's the co-author of this amazing cookbook. She is a freezer cooking diva. So together on today's show, we're going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about freezer cooking. And then some, we're going to tell you the do's and don'ts of freezing, uh, how to thaw safely, storage times. You're going to be a little bit surprised by that one. We're going to tell you how to throw a freezer cooking party and how to start a freezer club. And let me just tell you, this cookbook, I've had it in my hot little hands for about a month or so. It is unbelievable. I am not making this up. It is so awesome. I have made, listen to what I've made so far from the book. I've made busy morning breakfast cookies, grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce, cheddar chive burgers. I made those for Memorial Day. I had a dozen people at my house. Best burgers I have ever had. I'm not lying. I mean it. From the seafood chapter, I made pesto and feta tuna melts. Simon actually helped me make that one. Thank you, Simon. And I made sheet pan lemon garlic chicken. So we have so much to talk about today. It's a freezer feast. And I just want you to sit back and enjoy this show. If you're hungry, take a break, go get a snack because I'm really going to make you hungry here. Oh, and by the way, I am giving away a copy of From Freezer to Table. So be sure to check out the show notes from today's show on the podcast page over at lizeshealthytable.com, and I'll give you all the information you need to enter to win. Oh, by the way, if you like the show, please head on over to iTunes and post a review. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to know how to get over to iTunes, just go over to my podcast page, and I'll give you a link to head on over there. Before we get started, I do want to thank my sponsors, because I could not make the show possible without them. So let's go ahead and thank Zespri Sun Gold Kiwi Fruit. I just saw those at the Stop and Shop the other day. I'm so glad they're there. Grabbed myself some, and they're perfect to have in fruit salads and smoothies. Love them. You could just slice them and just sort of scoop out the inside with a spoon. They're juicy. They have a tropical sweet taste. You can even eat the skin. So check that out at ZespriKiwi.com. I'd also like to thank Bush's Beans. And one thing I do want to ask Rachel today is a little bit about freezing beans, because I freeze them all the time. Whenever I open up a can, I've got leftovers. I don't use them all. I want to use them in, say, quesadillas the next week or two weeks later. I freeze them in Ziploc bags. So you can go and learn all about Bush's Beans at BushBeans.com. And finally, I'd like to thank Super Healthy Kids, my wonderful friends on the internet. If you're looking for family-pleasing recipes, you can find them at superhealthykids.com. Let's go ahead and welcome Rachel to Liz's Healthy Table. Hi, Liz. I think that's the first time I've ever been called a freezer cooking diva. (laughs) Well, you are, but I think in your book you call yourself something else. Yeah, my friend Polly and I, we joke around that we are freezer cooking evangelists. I mean, we have been sold and we're excited to sell other people on the this lifestyle change as well. So tell me a little bit about Polly because you co-wrote yeah. the book and we have to give Polly her day in the sun here. She's not on the show with us today. Could not figure out how to get Polly and Rachel on the show at the same time. So we just like, we made it easy. And Rachel, you know, it's your lucky day, right? You're on the show. Right. Yeah, Polly and I pretty much do everything together. We've been blogging together for almost six years now, much like you and your friend Janice did many years ago. Mm. And you guys have been an inspiration to us, actually. 
Yeah, with okay. Meal Makeover Moms. For those folks who don't know the Meal Makeover Moms, I guess you and your co-author, Polly Connor, listened to Cooking with the Moms and followed us years ago. So thank you for that. We sure, we sure did. Yes. So you and Polly, you are partners in crime on the cookbook. And you also have a blog together, right? That's right. So Polly and I started Thriving Home. So thrivinghomeblog.com. We started it a little over five years ago. And we quickly realized that people loved the freezer meals that we were posting there. And I can back up and tell you a little bit about how we got to that point. But now we are kind of a go-to site for healthy freezer cooking, if you Google that. And a couple of years ago, we started getting contacted by several publishers saying, hey, would you like to publish a freezer cooking cookbook? And at that point, we weren't sure, but we started thinking about it. And then finally, through a great lit agent, got connected to an awesome publisher. And we have now published the cookbook that we wanted in our own homes and that we literally use every single week as well. And our cookbook's called From Freezer to Table. I think you said that in your intro. I did, yeah. And you know, when I look at this book, and I have cooked, as you know, several recipes, more than several from it so far. And when I cook, I cook and we eat it. But, you know, Josh is out of the house and Simon, he's leaving for his gap year. He's heading to Utah, boo-hoo, next week. And I'll tell everybody more about that later. But when we cook, we eat. And I'm not planning ahead because I don't have all these kids at my table anymore. But the concept of the book is that you can cook the recipes and make them right away. Or you can cook them at a certain point in the recipe. You say, hey, stop and freeze. Tell everybody a little bit about that. Yeah. So... This is the beauty of freezer cooking is, you know, I've got three kids at home. They're all in elementary school now and they all eat a lot. Polly's got three kids at home as well. And so mealtime is just a kind of a frantic hour. You know, I'm running kids here and there to sports and that kind of thing. She's got little toddlers still hanging on her leg at dinner time. And so what we love about freezer cooking is that what we typically do is we double most of the meals that we make from our book or from our site. And then we eat one of those fresh that night and we throw the other in the freezer with instructions for how to use it later. And that just saves us so much time. And it gets fresh, healthy food on the dinner table most nights of the week. Tell us a little bit about freezer cooking and the benefits. I sort of alluded to those at the beginning, yeah. but what are the benefits? Well, there's just so many. One of the things I realized, if I can just back up for a minute, all of this started for me about 10 years ago. I had my first child and quit my full-time job to stay home and just work part-time. And so our budget was very limited at that time. And I was also kind of thrown into this role of now I had to get something on the dinner table every night, whereas before my husband and I were eating out all the time because we were so busy at work or just you know picking something up that was a convenience food at the store. And honestly, we weren't eating very healthfully. And so once I stayed home and I had a child at home, I thought, I really want to be able to put a healthy meal on the table every night, but I didn't really have a clue where to start. And so a good friend of mine, her name's Darcy, she was in the same boat and a bunch of my friends, we were all kind of in the same boat. And she said, why don't we start a freezer club? And we were like, what's a freezer club? <laughs> so she said, well, okay, I've, I've heard about this thing that you can do where you can actually like freeze meals ahead of time and then have them in your freezer and then you prepare them that night and it would save us a bunch of time. Well, this was like back before, you know, freezer cooking, you couldn't Google freezer meal recipes. You couldn't go mm -hmm. to Pinterest. There was no Pinterest. No one was really writing about this. So a group of six of us, me included, started this freezer club and we began to meet once a month and we would, it was kind of trial and error. We would think through if a recipe could be frozen or not. And so we come together, create this meal plan for the month for our families. We go home. And during that month, we would each cook six portions of two recipes. So we were doing a lot of bulk cooking and then coming back together and swapping meals. And at the end of this freezer club, we would go home with 12 individually, you know, healthy meals for our families. So long story short, this was saving us so much money because we were buying in bulk. We were being really smart with our resources that way. We were saving time because we were only working with you know, one meal in bulk, it really does save you time in the kitchen when you're just, you know, browning a bunch of meat and then spreading it out amongst six meals versus working with a bunch of different ingredients. And it was just cutting down our time in the kitchen overall, we realized. Mm -hmm. An additional kind of benefit that we found out that 
meeting with our friends. So if you did freezer cooking in the way we did it, we were having so much fun. You know, it was like a night out of the week to hang out with other moms, but we felt like we were getting something accomplished at the same time. And so a lot of my best friends are still these people that were in this freezer club with me for seven years. We did this for seven years this way. Wow. And in the book, you actually explain to people how to set up your own freezer club. So if you want to gather friends together, you can do this. And you also explain to people how to pack those meals in the freezer. I was so surprised when I was reading through your book, because I know, you know, to get the Ziploc bags, the freezer ones, but you also talked about using mason jars. So tell everybody a little bit sort of the do's and don'ts of how to go about actually packing those meals in the freezer so that they last longer and they're easy to thaw later on. Yeah. So the key to making freezer meals delicious. And they really can be delicious because I think a lot of people can go, oh, freezer food, it comes out mushy or you know, <laughs> it's got the ice crystals on it and it doesn't taste very good. The key to it is really knowing how to freeze it and how to thaw it. And we do walk through all of that in our book. And so when you think about preparing a meal, one of the biggest things we tell people is that air is your enemy in the freezer. So you've got to reduce the contact of air to your food. So packaging it really tightly and in the right kind of containers is essential. So we outlined there's four kind of best storage methods. So you've got what we call rigid containers. So that would just be, you know, hard containers. We really like, I think it's Anchor Hawking makes these freezer safe glass baking dishes. So they can go from freezer to, you know, thawing to straight to the oven when you have your food in there. But they also come with these airtight lids. And so that's a really nice way to freeze a meal. But also, like you said, the freezer storage bags. So we think those gallon sized freezer bags are great. You can put soup in them. You can put just about anything. I would say, you know, casseroles are tricky. You wouldn't want to do that in a freezer bag. But gosh, we freeze meat and marinade and chili and you know, all kinds of things. But again, it's squeezing out the air, sealing it tight. A third way to freeze it is just to wrap it really tightly with plastic wrap a few times and then also put a layer or two of foil around the outside. And again, you're just shielding it from kind of the harshness of that freezer air. And then lastly, like you said, mason jars. So this is a thing the last few years that we've learned, you can freeze in mason jars. So the key to freezing in mason jars is actually using the name brand mason jars. You can't just freeze in any old glass jar. It will break. The other thing to know about it is you have to leave headroom at the top. So these mason jars, are it's pretty awesome. In there, it gives you a line. It says the fill line. And so you don't want to go above that. It leaves about an inch or so of space. And so if you do that, they are awesome in the freezer. We do that a lot for soups and sauces and that kind of thing. That was a big surprise to me. You know, I think we're also into the plastic container thing that we forget back in the day before plastic, mm-hmm. people froze in glass. So, you know, it's not earth shattering, right? But like you said, you want to make sure you're using the right products. Hey, is there a recipe in the book? And then we'll talk about thawing and storage time and all that. But mm-hmm. is there a recipe in the book right now that you are loving, you know, like, and I will talk about those burgers that I made the other night. They were so good. But what's your favorite right now? Your family's favorite. Do you have one? We have so many and I'm not kidding. We always joke, like we created this book for ourselves as much as anyone else because we use it all the time. But I will tell you one of our favorites is on the menu for tonight. It's in my fridge right now. I stuck it in there yesterday. I pulled it out from the freezer, stuck it in there yesterday. It's been thawing for 24 hours. And my kids were like, cheering when I told them what was for dinner tonight. We're having individual chicken pot pies. And so you make these homemade biscuits that actually freeze as well. You make the pot pie filling and you make them in these little, I actually do it in those large muffin pans, but you can do them in individual ramekins as well. So that's just thawing in these large muffin pans in there. And then the biscuits on top and you pop it in the oven and oh my goodness, they are to die for. Sounds so, maybe that's so good. Right. Yeah, I love pot pies. And you know, the kids are back in school. The weather's starting to get cooler. So it makes perfect sense. Like the other night, you know, I've been going through your book. You know, maybe it's like a once a month thing. I do love red meat and I tend to get the grass fed. That's kind of how I roll. And so I made these burgers and we had a bunch of people over. And the burgers just were so good. Now, I know you can make the burgers, 
make them into patties and freeze them and then thaw for later. But I was like instant gratification. I am cooking them. I am eating them. And I will publish because Rachel and Polly's publisher, Rodale Books, was kind enough to let Liz's Healthy Table publish this cheddar chive burgers recipe. But the thing I love about this recipe is that it is so flavorful. You guys use so many herbs in such a beautiful way. You've got a third cup of finely chopped fresh parsley. You have three tablespoons of minced fresh chives. And I will admit, I buy it at the supermarket now in a little container already Mm -hmm. chopped and it lasts forever. So I use three tablespoons, four large cloves of garlic minced, salt, pepper, a cup and a half of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I did use the reduced fat because that's how, you know, that's how I roll. Mm -hmm. Two pounds of ground beef and I did the grass fed. And then you call for six slices of cheddar cheese, which is optional on top, and then six whole grain buns. Thank you for the whole grains. And so I made these burgers and we grilled them. I told my husband, I said, Tim, read the directions, get out there to the grill. (laughs) And then we sliced up some beautiful tomatoes. I had these tomatoes that are our local tomatoes right now are fantastic. And these burgers were so moist, so flavorful. And I'm just not kidding you, everybody at the cookout was saying, this is the best burger I've ever had. Seriously. I love that. Your recipes really, really wow me. I have to say, you know, when I was going through the book, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are like totally my kind of recipes. I'm looking here at straight from Alaska salmon burgers. I mean, they're just gorgeous. I'm so loving this. So loving this book. Thanks. Thanks. And you know, it's funny because I think I even learned this from years ago about you know, we just look for opportunities to kind of sneak in nutrition in almost every recipe, at least I do now, just to help my kids be getting enough vegetables and fruits, you know, every single day. And so even when I make burgers, I mean, for years, that's how I've always made burgers. I'm like, oh, I'll go pick a bunch of parsley. We have kind of an herb garden on our back deck and, you know, barely keep it alive. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I go out there and pick a bunch of herbs. And so for these, it was inspired by what was in our backyard. And we have this chive plant that just never dies. Like (laughs) everything sits in a pot and it will not die. You you, you cannot kill it as hard as you've tried. I love this. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny when Janice and I had meal makeover moms, we always talked about weaving in fruits and vegetables. And so I'm glad you guys picked up on that because it really is, you know, you're adding things to your ground beef, right? So you might as well throw in some fresh herbs or you could add a little shredded carrot, you know, whatever floats your boat. All right. I'm going to back away from the recipes just for a second because I had some folks on my Facebook group. I have a podcast posse. It's a closed Facebook group. Anybody can join it. Just head on over to my podcast page on Liz's Healthy Table and you'll see in the sidebar a little button that says join the posse. So join us. But I did tell everybody that I was having you on the show. And so I got a question from Deanna Chan. She actually is a good friend of mine and she is a member of the posse. And she says, we love to eat fish a lot. Would that freeze well? If so, Would it be better to freeze the fish marinated and uncooked or already prepared and cooked? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would definitely not recommend cooking it beforehand. And I've done a lot of fish. And what I've found, I've tried it in marinades and not in marinades. And this goes for shrimp as well. My personal belief where I've landed with it, just testing this over the years, is that it's actually best just freeze the fish fillets on their own, wrap them up super tight, uncooked. And then make your marinade ahead of time, whatever it is, and throw that in the freezer right next to it. So now you've got your little meal pack ready to go. And then that thaws so quickly. And I don't know if we're going to run through like safe ways to thaw your food. I would love to. Yeah. But get to that in a minute. Yeah. But, you know, fish, fish in a marinade like that can thaw in no time. So you're saying freeze them separately, Mm -hmm. thaw them separately, and then assemble your meal. Yeah. Because it only takes about 30 minutes to really get you know, fish marinated or shrimp marinated. You don't want to go too long with that too, Mm -hmm. right? Because it will begin to kind of cook and break down those proteins. That's right. That's right. So talk a little bit about thawing because there is sort of this Mm -hmm. food safety. You know, some people we know in the past, maybe they're still doing it. You know, they'll put meat on the counter for hours on end and that's just Mm -hmm. not recommended. So what's the most efficient, safest way to thaw all of these assembled meals that you're Mm -hmm. telling people to create? Yes. So there are three safe ways to thaw frozen food, and you're exactly right. Sitting on the counter is not one of them. We do not recommend that. 
so if you can plan ahead, that's best. Thawing slowly in the refrigerator is what we say is always the most effective way. It doesn't change the integrity of your food and that kind of thing. But I get it. I get real life. You know, I often forget to do that. So there's two kind of backup ways to thaw your food. One is the cold water method. And this is one I just learned a few years ago. But you can actually stick your food in a leak-proof plastic bag and immerse it in cold water. So I just like fill up a big bowl in my sink of cold water and I stick my food down in there, you know, make sure it's sealed really well. And then you change out the water every 30 minutes and it goes surprisingly quickly to thaw. And and I have down, the USDA had some information about that. They said that a three to four pound package of whatever your food is would take about two to three hours to thaw. So if you even had a smaller one than that, it would take less time. So it's basically like 30 minutes per pound of food is what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So then the last method and the fastest method, but probably the one that we would say, eh, only use it if you have to, is the microwave defrost button. And, you know, I've done this a million times. It turns out fine most of the time, but you can begin to kind of cook part of your food on the edges or it can dry out your food a little bit. So those are the three safe ways. Okay. Very good. Talk a little bit about storage and how long foods can stay in the freezer, because you say in the book that food really could last forever in the freezer, but it gets a little funky, I would imagine. So talk about sort of food safety and quality. Mm -hmm. And I know in the book, you give a really great chart. So it takes all the guesswork out. But what's your basic advice on how long you can keep food in the freezer? So this was really revolutionary to Polly and me, but we learned that food is indefinitely safe in your freezer. So you could freeze something for five years, pull it out. If it's been frozen at a low enough temperature, the safe temperature, you can pull it out and eat it and you're not, it's not going to hurt you. It just might not taste good. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about freezer storage, we're talking about quality. You're right about that. So we do give, we have a chart with freezers, recommended freezer storage times. And Polly and I, it's funny when we were writing the book, we just went back and forth on this chart because We did a lot of research and pulled together a lot of different sources to figure out, you know, how long do things stay good in terms of quality in the freezer. And, you know, things like fresh meats freeze well, some cooked meats freeze well, fish and shellfish, some fruits and vegetables, all those things. We have those in the chart, but a lot of it's subjective. And so over the years, you know, I remember one time in our freezer club, I think I found a soup that had been frozen for a year and a half. And I pulled it out of my deep freeze and we ate it and it was awesome. So (laughs) we always say, you know, don't throw something out until you at least try it. But yeah, I would say most of the foods probably at least will last three months. And again, it's all about your packaging. But some of them can go up to even six to 12 months, especially, you know, we sometimes buy like, you know, meat in bulk, you know, grass fed meat in bulk or something. I mean, some of that can last up to 12 months if you freeze it well wrap it well. And you recommend labeling because, you know, we've all found that thing in the freezer, which we cannot identify because it's so filled with ice crystals. So, oh, and you also say when you do freeze your food to cool it first, because if you put hot food in the freezer, what can happen? What happens? Yeah. So there's a few things. I mean, I'm personally kind of worried about if you're putting it in plastic, you know, I want my food cooled down completely because, you know, you put food in hot plastic, it can leach some chemicals into your food. So I'm leery of that. But also it's really important to cool it down so that when it slides into the freezer, it doesn't begin to like release moisture in your container and form those ice crystals that can kind of ruin the integrity of your food. That makes sense. So cool it and then freeze it. Hey, I've got a question here from Diana Hanna. She's also a member of the podcast Posse. She says she's looking forward to the show. And she says she's always been wary of freezing cooked rice or pasta. Is it possible to freeze them without losing their structure? So cooking it and freezing it or no, no? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I've done plenty of cooked rice because you know, a lot of times I'll make rice and it's just like way too much for our family. But I don't think it comes out of the freezer well to just eat plain personally. So when I use it from the freezer, I typically throw it in a soup or something like that. Pasta, cooked pasta just does not do well by itself, I should say. We do have casseroles and we do recommend kind of cooking it definitely to al dente. So you don't want to overcook pasta that does not do well in the freezer. 
But if it's within a soup or a casserole, it can do fine. But on its own, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, good to know. What about cottage cheese? I've always mm. wondered about that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Typically, dairy doesn't do great in the freezer. Now, again, Polly and I are we're amazed. We like to do science experiments. <laughs> so recently we started just freezing a bunch of stuff. Like we threw some yogurt in the freezer and pulled it out. And they really say yogurt won't do well. It can kind of, I guess, coagulate and that kind of thing. But the one I threw in there, and maybe it's because it had pectin in it, but it actually was okay. I ate it the next day. I stirred it up and ate it. So I guess you could try cottage cheese, but it's definitely not recommended. Okay. It would separate. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Hey, you talk in the book about this. You talked about the freezer club, but this freezer cooking party. And you really explain to people how to host the party. And I know I used to be in a gourmet group and I loved it. Everybody would bring a different dish and someone would plan it and then somebody would host it. But this idea of this freezer cooking party, tell everybody a little bit about that. Yeah. We think a freezer cooking party is a great first step for someone who wants to try out freezer cooking. And plus, it's really fun. So, you know, the freezer club you think of is like, those are the people who are committed <laughs> to really trying to make this a lifestyle. But if you just want to try it out, a one-time freezer cooking party can be a blast. And we've thrown a lot of these ourselves. So there's a couple ways you can do it. But the way we outline in the book is you actually invite all of your friends to one location. So about six people is a nice number, six or less. And you choose, you know, maybe six recipes. So one recipe per person and everyone buys the ingredients for their recipe. And so we actually have several party plans in the book that you can choose from and use our recipes. And then you come together for a few hours one night and you put all these meals together as a team and we make it a lot of fun. We've got, you know, wine and snacks and we've got music going and we're chatting about life and then putting together these meals. And again, it's so fun. At the end of the night, you go home with six different freezer meals. I love this. And, you know, you've got three kids. Polly has three kids. Mm -hmm. So just the benefit alone of going home with all these meals is just unbelievable. Yeah. And you've had a fun night out, right? As a mom, you get to hang out with your friends. That's right. You're socializing and you're being productive at the same time. Exactly. So this other recipe in the book that I made, the sheep pan, lemon, garlic, chicken, and veggies. This recipe I loved because... You know, chicken can be sort of bland and boring, but you guys so kicked it up here. You've got olive oil and lemon zest and lemon juice, garlic, salt and pepper. You use fresh thyme and you use this as like a marinade for the chicken and that cooks on a sheet pan. And then the veggies go on after that. And I actually, for this recipe, you call for a bag of fresh chopped broccoli or carrots or cauliflower. And I'm trying to think when I made this, I think I did a medley of cauliflower. Oh no, I know what I did for this recipe. I did cauliflower steaks. That's what I did. Mm. So once the chicken came off, I did cauliflower steaks and the chicken was so moist and so flavorful. So this was like another huge winner for me. And if you were to make this awesome. recipe and then freeze it, you would actually, tell me how you would freeze this one. Cause I'm going to yeah, let you so tell everybody. One... This one, you really want to use fresh vegetables from our testing. So this one, when you're freezing it, you're making the marinade, you're throwing the chicken in with it, you're sealing it, and you're freezing the chicken in the marinade, and then you'll have to buy the vegetables fresh. Now, I will say I tested it with frozen vegetables, so if you wanted to buy that medley, that's, I think it's called California medley of frozen vegetables, to me, it was still really yummy, and you could throw that in the freezer next to your chicken and do that, but... The very best way to do it is with those fresh veggies. Mm -hmm. So you've got the chicken already marinated and sealed. Mm -hmm. And how easy is that? And it's raw in the freezer. And then when you're ready to make this recipe, you pull it out, you thaw it, you cook it, and then the veggies go on next. Love it. Yeah, and what's kind of cool about this recipe too, is so you pull your chicken out, you get that going in the oven, and then you throw your veggies back into that same marinade because they're going to cook at a really high temperature. So you're not worried about cross contamination with that. So you kind of dip them and give them a dip in the pool of the marinade. And then they go in on another sheet and start roasting. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Love that one. So your kids have been taste testers, I would imagine, over the years. <laughs> yes, they are very opinionated. Mm -hmm. 
food. And as taste testers, and maybe you've experienced the same thing I have, because you're exposing your kids constantly to all these recipes, and you've really empowered them to be your taste testers, they tend to have quite a palate by the end of their teen years, because they've been inundated with all of these experiments, and it becomes kind of a fun game. Yeah, absolutely. And they have such an interest in cooking. I mean, not my oldest son, he and I used to cook together a lot more than we do now. But even so, I just love he'll go like, he can make fried eggs for himself. He's 10. You know, he helps make breakfast for the little kids in the morning. And we started that really early on as you know, I kind of put a knife in his hand when he was five and taught him how to chop and he would chop herbs for me or help us make salad and all that kind of stuff. But I think you're exactly right. It's exposing them a little bit at a time, getting them in the kitchen with you, letting them taste test the things that they've helped make. It makes a big difference. Now, do you and or Polly have a culinary background or are you just self-taught? We are completely self-taught. And so much of that, though, is I felt like that freezer club I was in for all those years was like a boot camp, you know, because we were just constantly trying new recipes. But I've always had a bent towards cooking. I love food. You know, back when Food Network was all these shows that would actually teach you how to cook, I was a Food Network junkie. I read recipe books as a hobby. You know, I've been doing this for many years. But yeah, self-taught. Good, good stuff. And do you have, I always love to ask my guests this question, but do you have a favorite cookbook out there that you think everybody, besides yours, of course, and that you think everybody should have on their bookshelf? Yeah. So my go-to is America's Test Kitchen. I think it's called The Next Best Recipe. It's a giant one, but it's such a great, that's one of my favorite shows on PBS as well. Do you watch that? I have, yeah. And I've I've met a bunch of them over the years because they're located in Boston and that's where I live. Oh, yeah. I love that show. I learned so much from that show. And as far as your favorite chef, because I ask everybody this too, Mm. I say, who's your chef crush? But who's the chef that you (laughs) admire the most, somebody that you would love to spend Mm -hmm. a dinner with? Right. I don't know. Rachel Ray has sure taught me a lot over the years. I think she's pretty great. But Ina Garden, I don't know. It's a toss up. Gosh. I don't know. It's got to be Ina or Rachel. And it's so funny because you're in show number 11, right, for Liz's Healthy Uh Table. And Uh Ina has been mentioned and Rachel by several guests. So Mm -hmm. those two seem to be rocking it. And maybe we need to get them on the show at some point. I got got to work that. I got to work it. So we're going to give away a copy of From Freezer to Table, 75 Simple Whole Foods Recipes. And we're going to give that away to one lucky winner. And I believe this giveaway is USA and Canada. You're able to ship to, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm glad we can open that up to our Canadian friends. So we're going to have that giveaway going on over at LizIsHealthyTable.com on the podcast page under the show notes for this episode. So I encourage everybody to head on over to enter to win. So what else have I not asked you? I don't want to give everything away as far as your book goes, because I really want people to buy the book. But where can people find you on the web? Yeah, so they can check out our blog. It's called Thriving Home. The URL is thrivinghomeblog.com. And like I said, we post tons of healthy freezer meals, but also Most of our recipes are just simple, real food recipes for families like ours. And, you know, we've got picky palates in our house. Yeah, our kids like to try new stuff, but they're also typical kids. And so, you know, they're kid-friendly, family-friendly, easy recipes at thrivinghomeblog.com. Great. And what's your next big project? What's coming up on the horizon for you? We just signed our second book deal with Rodale, and it'll be along the same vein as our first book. It'll be... Whole Foods freezer meals, but this time with a bent on slow cooker meals and then also instant pot meals. So that's the newest device in our kitchens that we've been working with and having success with is using the instant pot. I do not have an instant pot and that might have to go on my bucket list for the fall. I think I need to get one. Anything else you and they are hot. I'm telling you, I don't think a day goes by. I don't see something on Twitter or Facebook about an instant pot and they're easy and we like that. So anything else before I let you go? Because I know you're busy. You've got your three kids. You're working on your next cookbook. you got a blog. You're doing it all. But anything that we haven't touched on on today's show that you'd like to share with my listeners? Well, our hope with this book, you know, most of all, when we decided to write this book, and this is a big undertaking, and it took us over a year to do, 
But our goal with it is to really, we want to help families. We want to help families get together around the table, you know, have a healthy meal together and just connect as a family. We know how hard that is. It's so easy to just jump in the car and, you know, drive through fast food. But we think with the help of our book and the encouragement in our book and the resource of it, that maybe we can help more families have time to sit down to a really healthy meal together. That sounds good to me. And I will say one thing we didn't touch on in the book is that you do have a soup chapter, you have a slow cooker chapter, you have a chicken chapter, you have a beef chapter. You've got what else? I'm looking. I'm looking. You've got a lot. Yeah. Right. We do a lot of freezer breakfasts around our house, actually. And what else am I missing? You've got freezer, seafood. Yeah, it's, it's so and great. We also have in the back, we wanted to help people learn how to make and stock their freezer with some staples like marinara sauce and pizza sauce and chicken broth. And even like pizza dough. You can make your own whole wheat pizza dough and throw that in the freezer and have it on hand. Sounds good. And next on my list is Polly's Signature Taco Soup. So that's what I will be making next. It is so good in the slow cooker and so easy. It's great for a crowd as well. Well, I love the book. I'm not just saying that. I love this book. It speaks to me. Every recipe works. It's full of flavor. And I really encourage everybody to check it out on Amazon or over at Rachel's blog. So Rachel, thank you so much. And tell Polly, I'm sorry we missed having her on the show, but she was here in spirit. So thank you for being a guest today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to head on over to Liz'sHealthyTable.com. If you love the show, I would appreciate a review on iTunes. Thank you, thank you. That would be so awesome. And if you want to enter to win a copy of the cookbook, Like I said, Liz'sHealthyTable.com. Check out my podcast page, show notes. And until next time, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table.